Thank you to all the organizers. So my name is Ivor Ambrose. I'm Managing Director of the European Network for Accessible Tourism, which is an association of about 100 organizations in Europe and around the world, which is trying to create a bridge between the tourism sector on one side and everything to do with accessibility and inclusion on the other side. So that really means about bringing these two communities together. Uh, and we've been doing this for about 10 years now in, in uh, Europe, but also, as I said, around the world, we have also members in other countries and in all regions of the world. We're here in this session to listen to the uh, presentations of our speakers who are from eight different countries, nine speakers from eight different countries, who will be talking to us about their best practices in policies and practices on accessibility for improving the accessibility of tourism, or tourism for all, as we like to call it. And I'd just like to pick up on a couple of things from the uh, earlier presentations today and the speakers who've introduced this session at Zero Project. First of all, we're, we're very pleased to be part of this session because tourism is part of life. It's part of having a full and rich experience of life to be able to participate fully in tourism. It is also an area where there needs to be full inclusion of people with disabilities and people with a wide range of issues which crop up when you are on a, on a tour, on a, travel, on a visit to any country or region of the world. You want to be able to travel and experience as everyone else does. So what we're uh, interested in here is to, to present to you very concisely the presentations from good practices and policies around the world that have been selected by Zero Project uh, to give you a taste, just a taste, of some of the leading innovative policies and practices that are showing the way towards accessible tourism. Now, our first speaker who I would introduce to you is uh, Marek Plura, and uh, he's sitting with me here on my left, and uh, he is a member of the European Parliament uh, from Poland. Uh, he is uh, married with two children, but since birth he's been living with the condition of progressive mus muscular dystrophy. Uh, he's from, uh, he graduated from Krakow on, in psychotherapy, and he was elected to the Polish Parliament before he became a member of the European Parliament. He, at the European Parliament, he's in the Employment Committee the, the, and the Transport and Tourism Committee, and he's vice chair of the European Parliament's Disability Intergroup. Uh, I would call on him to uh, welcome all of you to this session. Uh, he is, in fact, a, a kind of co-moderator uh, um, of this session in that he is a powerful representative of what it means to work for accessible tourism. He's working at the policy level. Uh, and I should also promote, uh, point out that he promotes very strongly Silesian heritage, and he will surely invite you to go to Silesia. Uh, and the last point that I have on his short biography is that he was awarded in 2012 the Order of the Smile. And I want to know about the Order of the Smile. And I think it's something we should all have in this session, the Order of the Smile, to take accessible tourism to the world with a smile. Dzień dobry. Przede wszystkim bardzo dziękuję za zaproszenie. Jestem zaszczycony, że po raz kolejny mogę wystąpić na konferencji Zero Projekt i bardzo się cieszę, że mogę zabrać głos w panelu dotyczącym włączającej turystyki. First of all, I would like to thank you for the invitation. I'm honored to once more take part in the Zero Project conference and delighted to be speaking at a panel related to inclusive tourism. Turystyka to jedna z najbardziej rozwijających się gałęzi gospodarki w Europie. To właśnie Europa spośród wszystkich kontynentów przyciąga największą liczbę turystów z całego świata. Sektor turystyczny zatrudnia około 
17 milionów ludzi oraz generuje blisko 10% PKB Unii Europejskiej. Nie wspominając o tym, jak korzystny wpływ ma na inne sektory gospodarki, takie jak kultura, gastronomia, budownictwo czy transport. Tourism is among the fastest growing economic sectors in Europe. Of all the continents, it's Europe that attracts the most tourism worldwide. This sector accounts for approximately 17 million employees and generates almost 10% of EU GDP. Those numbers don't, do not even take into account the positive effect that tourism has on the other areas of economy, such as culture, gastronomy, construction or transport. Ten rozwojowy sektor boryka się ze swoistymi problemami, jak sezonowość i związana z tym niestabilność zatrudnienia. Dlatego dla dalszego harmonijnego rozwoju musi wprowadzać sporo zmian. Nevertheless, this sector is not without its problem, such as instability of employment linked to its seasonal character. Many changes must be introduced to ensure further sustainable development. Dzień dzisiejszych czasów jest dostosowanie usług do potrzeb różnych grup konsumentów, między innymi rodzin z dziećmi, osób starszych czy niepełnosprawnych. Niezbędne jest także wyposażenie kadr w odpowiednie umiejętności oraz efektywne wykorzystanie nowoczesnych technologii. In today's world, services need to be adjusted to the needs of different consumer groups, such as families with children, the elderly, or persons with disabilities. The effective use of modern technology and the development of appropriate skills among the staff are also necessary. Obecnie toczą się prace nad europejskim aktem w sprawie dostępności, który wprowadzi Ogólne, obowiąz ogólnie obowiązujące normy dla wielu grup produktów i usług na rynku wewnętrznym. To także potrzebna regulacja, ta bardzo potrzebna regulacja budzi wiele kontrowersji, a w toku dyskusji często podnoszona jest kwestia kosztów i obciążeń. Zdecydowanie rzadziej, a szkoda, mówi się o kosztach niewprowadzania tej regulacji. An European Accessibility Act, which will introduce a set of binding norms for many types of products and services on the internal market, is currently being prepared. This much-needed regulation is the source of much controversy, and the subject of its cost is often brought up. It's a shame that we so rarely talk about the cost which result from not introducing this regulation. Moim zdaniem postawienie na dostępność towarów i usług to przede wszystkim inwestycje. Osoby z niepełnosprawnościami, ich bliscy, osoby starsze to łącznie bardzo duża grupa konsumentów zainteresowanych dobrami dostępnymi. To także grupa o ogromnym potencjale społecznym i ekonomicznym. In my opinion, accessibility of goods and services is, first and foremost, an investment. When put together, persons with disabilities, their loved ones and the elderly constitute a very large consumer group focused on accessible goods. It is also a group with great social and economic potential. Zdobyczą cywilizacyjną jest to, że żyjemy coraz dłużej jak również to, że osoby z niepełnosprawnościami nie są już skazane na życie w instytucji, izolację, brak możliwości zatrudnienia, kształcenia, korzystania z dóbr kultury. Naturalną konsekwencją jest tworzenie środowiska dostępnego, w którym wszyscy mogą prowadzić życie aktywne, przyczyniając się do rozwoju społecznego i gospodarczego. Our civilizational advance has allowed people to live longer lives and persons with disabilities to avoid living in institution in isolation without the possibility of employment, education, nor access to culture. 
A natural consequence of this advance is fostering an accessible environment in which everybody can have an active life and participate in social and economic development. Bardzo ważnym motorem rozwoju turystyki dostępnej może stać się także europejska karta osoby niepełnosprawnej. Rodzaj legitymacji powszechnie uznawanej w Unii Europejskiej potwierdzającej status osoby niepełnosprawnej i tym samym umożliwiającej dostęp do istniejących udogodnień dla osób z niepełnosprawnościami, takich jak na przykład darmowy transport publiczny, obsługa poza kolejnością, asysta, zniżki do muzeów i tym podobne. Dla osób niepełnosprawnych przebywających za granicą. Obecnie nie trwa faza pilotażowa tego projektu w ośmiu państwach członkowskich. Jestem przekonany, że właściwie wdrożony projekt Karty Osoby Niepełnosprawnej może powtórzyć sukces Karty Osoby Młodej i zmobilizować muzea, restauracje, firmy transportowe, hotele i tym podobne do adresowania swojej oferty dla turystów z niepełnosprawnościami. The European Disability Card could also become a powerful driver of tourism growth, a document widely recognized in the EU confirming the disabled person's stat status and granting them access to existing facilities such as free public transport assistance or discount in museum while abroad. The project is currently being piloted in eight member states. I'm convinced that this project, if implemented correctly, could replicate the success of European Youth Card and mobilize museums, restaurants, transport, hotels and others to address this offer to tourists with disabilities. I think that the possibility for objects tourist would be to be o European Certificate of Accessibility. I think that applying for a European Accessibility Certificate could be also an interesting possibility for tourist site. Na koniec pragnę powiedzieć, że w moim regionie, na Śląsku, możemy się pochwalić znakomitymi przykładami. Śląsk, niegdyś region kopalń i hut, szczyci się obecnie szlakiem zabytków postindustrialnych. Myślę, że jest to Jedno z niewielu miejsc na świecie, gdzie osoba z niepełnosprawnością może bezpiecznie zwiedzać na przykład kopalnie. Finally, I would like to mention that in my native region, Silesia, we can showcase some excellent examples. Once a region of mines and ironworks, Silesia is now home to a trial of post-industrial landmarks. I believe that it is one of the few places in the world where a person with disability can safely visit sites such as mines. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your attention and welcome to Silesia. <laughs>
the catalog on accessibility that you have in your packs uh, is on page 89. I'll give you the reference so that uh, you have that. It's on page 89, and he's talking about Europe without barriers. It's uh, an accessibility uh, project to map and to develop accessibility, uh, which was carried out through a European Union-funded project. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Ivor. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the invitation to the Zero Project. And, uh, well, today I'm going to describe uh, in a few minutes, because this is a time of law, uh, the activities that we are trying to do, that we are doing actually within our organization. HISM is, uh, okay. HISM is the Multiple Sclerosis Society in Italy, and it's a large organization actually. We have about 100 branches all around Italy, almost in each region. We have about 10,000 volunteers, and uh, we cover two main needs of people with disability, in particular for people with multiple sclerosis, but our activities actually go beyond that. And the first one is the scientific research. We invest, uh, we give to researcher a uh, um, few millions every day, every year, every day, no, every year from three to five in order to develop a better life for people with multiple sclerosis, and we also take care of people with disabilities. Since 2000, we also take care of accessible tourism. Why? Because it's social inclusion. As Daniela was saying before this morning, uh, having uh, social inclusion, inclusion is also giving the possibility of fun, of uh, free time, ex and everything which is related to the private life, and surely Tourism is one of the fields, is one of the activities that is best improving the quality of life of people if it's accessible. That's the reason why start, we started in 2000 with these activities. What we do? Uh, we try to focus and to fill up all the elements of the chain, meaning accommodation and transportation and uh, organizing events and also excursions and the tour operating. You can see here like uh, um, the scheme where you, you can see actually the um, properties that we have, the activities like training that we do in Italy and the international activity that we did, we started to do with Europe Without Barriers little more in details. We have a branch of accessible properties in Italy, one in Tuscany. Uh, I believe it's a known, it's a well-known property in the, in the field of accessible tourism. It's one of the very few with over 60 rooms practically uh, with, uh, which are accessible for people with reduced mobility. I would like to underscore that. And uh, we also have apartments in the mountains, uh, in uh, close to the in the Dolomites, actually close to Cortina. And we all, we have a property in Ischia Island, and we also have a property in the spa resort. So we tried to cover all the destination for the people with access needs in Italy, meaning the countryside, the spa, the sea, and the mountains. Then we developed also activities in, uh, in tour operating, since we, would, we, we cannot only provide accommodation, etc., but people that wanted to move to some locations, to some destination, they want to enjoy the, um, the territory. Then we have a tour operator providing travel management with expertise of, with people with access needs. Uh, we organize events uh, with hundreds of people in many locations in Italy, from Rome to Genoa to Milan, in practically in each region. And then we also provide information and training to other organizations and also business in some small cases that want to become aware about how to deal with access needs. Then we also have part, we are part, as I was saying before, of ENET, European Net for Accessible Tourism, because we started a few years ago to become an international player, and we would still want even more to focus on this. Another key words mentioned this morning is, by Daniela again, it's uh, mainstreaming. It's very important because we don't want only to be uh, like uh, a place or we, cannot only, we don't want only to provide services to people with disabilities. We want our location and our services to be open to everyone so that's like uh, uh, it's a real uh, concept of a social inclusion. Then we do projects, I will describe more later, and uh, uh, Above all, advocacy and empowerment of people with disabilities, providing autonomy wherever is possible in the tourism field. 
Well, this is the first property when everything started in 2000. It's a location in, uh, in Italy with, again, uh, 60, about 60 rooms, uh, accessible rooms uh, in the um, Tuscan countryside. In this location, we have two swimming pools, we have a park, we have, uh, um, actually, there is also a tennis field, there is a bar, there is a f small um, room for the events. And uh, we tried here to provide all the services, also to welcome people with disabilities. It's open to everyone, but we have the service, the specific service for people with disabilities. Um, that's uh, the concept that we started a few years ago. Then, uh, with this experience, we started the project uh, Europe Without Barriers, which is actually a project founded, co-founded at the very beginning with, uh, by the European Commission but that became a business after, our, because after that because we become a tour operator and we are creating uh, itineraries all around Europe and we, we started three years ago and we are continuing right now. This is some tours that we are doing uh, as you can see in main um, in few countries in Europe what the point, the essence of our services is actually providing information. Sometimes people, they do not want to go to use the packages, but they want to ask for specific information. This is just a few listing. And then those are a few projects we are involved in, and uh, you can read those. The first one that I mentioned is Lebanon for All. I did, I put it first, even if we have a small part, because there is uh, uh, the project, the, the leader of this project right next to us. But we have other projects like uh, the RiseWise, which is connecting university in all Europe with the people with this organization of people with disabilities. We are creating in Italy two projects in Basilicata, southern region, southern Italy, and the Tuscany. And we, has, we have another project which is very interesting in my opinion because it's bringing corporate business into accessibility fields. It's a project related to developing accessible itineraries in the ports uh, in all Europe, mainly in Italy, Spain and France at the beginning, in partnership with Costa. Uh, it's a project, Costa Cruises, which is a project funded by the Costa uh, Cruises Foundation. And the aim is to create, to improve the possibility of having accessible itinerary uh, on, on offboard the ships, meaning connecting the ships, which are more or less accessible, actually. There is a good standard of accessibility somehow, and to the territory. Then uh, I think uh, the, um, we are almost there for the time, so I'm going to finish. There is a few pictures of the events, of the services we provided in the past. And the, the um, fil rouge about these activities was the, the, the inclusion and the happiness of people that participated. And it was a team, both clients, experts, etc., that were all together doing this team, these uh, itineraries. And that's the most important part because this become a huge, important experience for both people with disabilities and other people that did not have any kind of experience of a disability. And then together, we were able to improve new services, to do the trips as well, as well. and it was fun, actually. Doing this job was real fun, and it became a huge background for all the projects we are developing, as I mentioned before, like in the southern Italy, et cetera. So, Mainstream is the important focus that we continue to, pull, to, um, to reach, to try to reach, and it will be very important for the next step to obtain this. We are at the end, and I thank you very much for your attention. I wish you a very good day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marco. So I think one of the, the lasting impressions for me about this uh, example is that, of course, it's a, an association of people with disabilities and for people with disabilities that is taking a step out towards the tourism sector and saying, yes, we can do tourism as well, but we will make it inclusive, we will make it mainstreamed, uh, so that we are not only serving our own uh, community, but everyone can participate. So I think that's a very important uh, message that underlies everything that Marco has spoken about. The next speaker is uh, also close friend. It's Magnus Berglund, and uh, he's from Scandic Hotels. He's the accessibility director of Scandic Hotels, which is the largest hotel operator in the Nordic region, with over 230 hotels and 45,000 hotel rooms in seven countries. Since Magnus uh, took on his role at Scandic in 2003, he has created a unique accessibility program for the hotel chain and this has really 
put Scandic in a world leading position in regard to the hotel sector, offering great hotel experiences for everyone. Scandic has received numerous awards, both in Sweden and internationally, for its successful accessibility work. And Magnus, and not to forget his uh, assistance dog, Dixie, who's also with us, have become internationally known as ambassadors within the area of accessibility. The good practice is mentioned in the Zero Project catalog on page 109 for comprehensive hotel accessibility strategy. Thank you, Magnus. Thank you very much, Ivar. Uh, hi, my, as Ivar said, uh, my name is Magnus Boglin and I work for Scandic Hotels. I'm going to take you back a little time to 2002, because 2002 myself uh, didn't work, and I was sick leave, and I could walk three to five meters. And myself was going to go out and travel. I was going to go for a wedding in, uh, in Malmö, and I was going to take a plane from Stockholm to Copenhagen and then the train. Then I was going into uh, airport and checking uh, and, and checking what sort of service do you have for me that have a little problem to walk. And I could get assistance service and I could uh, get a wheelchair. Then I was going into five different total trains and checking what do you have for me that have a little problem to walk. How do you sell it? How do you market for me? And I couldn't really find anything. Uh, or I could find one hotel told me where, where I could play golf, another told me where I could rent a horse, and a third told me where, 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 if I want to go to a movie. But I couldn't find anything. What, what was the disabled room? And do you have a chef for me to sit? And how high is the bed? And so on. So I uh, contacted Scandic Hotel 2003 and said, if we start working with disabled questions, we're going to get more guests. And the first we did 2003 was we rent wheelchair and let everyone in the head office sit in a wheelchair for two hours. And we started with the CEO. And that's just one part of all sorts of disability, but it's an extremely good way to getting up the discussion that that's really what we want. And everyone come back and said the same thing. Man, I don't learn to go wheelchair for two hours, but give me a week, it's going to go much better. And I can have a, a table in, in the office that's going up and down, so that's no problem. I've seen many people that, that, uh, that sit in a wheelchair and drive a car, but how do I close in the handicap toilet? No one could close the handicap toilet because we didn't have a railing under the door so you could reach it, that costing about 25 euros. So we understand this is the small things we need to start working with. Because normally, when we speak about disability questions, we speak about, oh, yeah, that's good, but that costs money. But we understand that we need to change our way to thinking. One of the things we know is that, do you know, people in wheelchair just drinking tea and don't drink coffee. That's what we thought when we were taking our breakfast buffet in all our hotels, because the tea we had in the buffet on that height and, uh, and a cup of coffee were put up here. No one could reach them if you were sitting in a wheelchair. Okay. Then we understand we need to train all our team members. So one of the things we started with in Scandic was training and speaking about disability questions. And that was the most important we, we, we started doing. And we have one really big goal in Scandic, that is if you're coming to a Scandic hotel, you should never feel that you are disabled, you should always feel that, that you are a guest. Sorry, what happened? Thank you very much. Uh, uh, so we started that. We started with with. Uh, uh, sorry, I need to check back so I know where I am. Uh, and we started with with uh, our e-learning. We have our, our own e-learning. Then we have everything from how how do you cook food for someone that is uh, blind? How how do we treat people that are in wheelchair and so on? So we discuss everything here about disability questions but for the guest. Everything about what can we do with much more so it's working for all our guests. Because we have only guests in Scandic Hotel, and our guests maybe have some sort of disability. So that's how we're working with, with, with these questions. Uh, so one of the things we noticed in Scandic, that was there was no real standard in the hotel business. A disabled room could look like a hospital room. It could be just one chair. It could be so different. And it was so different. And many times it was only focused on the law. 
not focus on the design for all or what is best for, for, for the customer and for the client. So what we did in Scandic that we was doing our, our own standard. So we have our own standard that is, I have a problem here. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we have our own standard in, in uh, Scandic Hotel. It's 135 points and 90 points is mandatory for all our hotels. So that means if we're taking over a hotel and we have just bought over four to five hotels in Finland, so we're going to go around education all our team members and introduce this standard. But all the other points is mandatory when we build new hotels. And that could be the more expensive thing that we're doing when we renovation or building new hotels because then it don't cost any more money. It don't cost any more money to having uh, one part of the reception that is lower uh, when you build a new reception and so on. Uh, and what we see here, yeah, something, yeah, all four. Here's a normal superior room in a Scandic hotel. On the same time can be designed as acceptable rooms. The only difference is if you look into two, uh, two first picture is that the bed is going up and down. So there are so many people that don't know that this is a disabled room too. So many guests are coming to our hotel and asking is the, uh, is the room with the bed free? Because that's how we try to design. And the next thing is here, if you look in the bathroom, here we can take out things and we can put in things. So we can do it so it's not looking uh, um, like a hospital room. So that's how we try to, to do it. Uh, the next thing is food for all. That, this is something that's coming much, much more. We have now in, in all our Scandic Hotel 20 products for gluten and lactose things. So we don't need to ask for it. It's always on the breakfast buffet. And this is something that's coming extremely much more. And just one brag is we just built a new hotel in Scandic Flesland. That's probably one of our most acceptable hotels we, we build. And that we're trying to do. All our new hotel we're building is going to be the next hotel need to be the most acceptable hotel for so many guests as possible. That's how we're working all the time. And that's... Um, and the last one is, yes, that's I was always speaking about the Dixie. Dixie is my service dog, so she jump up in the morning and give my clothes. And I had another dog before. She was a little faster than this dog, uh, as I need to tell. Yeah, because my last dog know that so fast I get to bed, she get breakfast. But this dog just jump up and start sleeping. So, but uh, she's trained to help me in carrying all my things. And she have her own Instagram account, that is dog at work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Magnus and, uh, and Dixie, the dog at work, right. And uh, I think what's, what comes across most strongly here is, of course, that with Scandic Hotels, we have a, a prime example of business understanding accessibility. It's about improving the business. The bottom line is more accessible, more business. And that's a great uh, uh, recognition, I think, from Zero Project to have, have picked out Scandic for this award. So, we now move on again. Oh, sorry, and that was, that was page 109. I mentioned that, the catalogue. Now I move to uh, Bastien Palis. Hello, good morning. <laughs> and we haven't met before <laughs> this session, uh, but Bastien is from Ecuador in South America. She's a senior consultant in the fields of public-private partnerships and value chain development with small producer associations. And she holds a master's degree in sustainable resource management from the Technical University of Munich and has worked for different private and public organizations, including the German Technical Organization, the Belgian Development Agency, and Co Corporation for Export and Investment Promotion, among others. So also a strong business background. She is a private entrepreneur, being the co-founder of Ecuador's only wheelchair accessible Amazon Lodge, uh, Hauskila, and the accessible travel agency, South America for All, which offers accessible tours in Ecuador, including Galapagos Islands, Peru, and Argentina. She is also vice president of a foundation, AMN, which offers integral rehabilitation based on hippotherapy, horse riding for children with mental and physical <laughs> disabilities. And her best practice uh, that she's going to talk to us about today is on wheelchair accessible tours in South America, page 63 in the catalog. Thank you very much, Bastien. Thank you very much um, to the Project Zero 
uh, for having um, us, us here. It is an honor for us to have been nominated by uh, such a wonderful uh, group. Well, um, I would like to speak a little bit about our uh, um, accessible tour operator, which is called South America for, uh, for All. Um, I'm going to take you back quickly to 2001, when my mother started the um, a hypotherapy center uh, with children with disabilities, and where she uh, met uh, a person in a wheelchair who wanted to travel around Ecuador. So that's when we first were um, confronted with accessible tourism, and at that time we were just about to build an uh, Amazon Lodge in, in Ecuador. And that's when we integrated this accessible part into uh, like all our infrastructure. Today, uh, our lodge in the Amazon has seven fully accessible bungalows. And from there, uh, we wanted, uh, w we were challenged that not only would uh, people in wheelchairs come to, to the hotel just to sleep there, but also to do tours. So um, as, as was mentioned before, the idea of, of having uh, people in wheelchairs, um, the possibility to do everything, um, all the tours and experiences, just as anyone else was always uh, very important for us. So uh, from there, <clears throat> we uh, started to include and train different service providers to be able not only for people to come to our lodge in the Amazon, but also to be able to uh, travel around Ecuador, Highland, the uh, Amazon, but also Galapagos. So Galapagos uh, was always, um, well, a, a place where everyone wants to go and was not accessible. So uh, we trained and, and worked with different uh, service providers, and today uh, San Cristóbal Global Island is one of the most accessible uh, islands in, on the Galapagos where we can also take our guests. Um, so, uh, well, as we all know, tourism um, interacts with a lot of different service providers um, and uh, we, we have been able to, uh, to design uh, several tours, um, mainly in Ecuador where we have the, um, sorry, I have to go back. <laughs> well, um, just quickly, uh, so in 2013, we decided to grow and to expand also to other countries, not only Ecuador, but also include tours in Peru and uh, tours in Argentina since 2017. <clears throat> well, uh, here just uh, to show you quickly, um, and these are, are uh, like what was key to, for us to offer the, the tours uh, was to have an off-road wheelchair. Simple innovations uh, to make remote places accessible is, is key to our company's vision. Here you can see a group of people in wheelchairs about to leave the lodge and to go into the rainforest and have the full experience of having a jungle walk. Um, also, the idea of having simple innovations, like here, when you have the, the will, there's always a way. This ramp was made in only two hours because um, it's remote places, so there's some things that are not fully planned, but uh, we assure to our clients that uh, we find simple innovations inside, on-site, and um, make it work, basically. So these are just some, some of the pictures of the different service providers we work with and hotels also. I mean, since um, uh, the past decade in Ecuador, there has been a lot of changes. A lot of hotels have included accessibility uh, design, universal design into uh, their infrastructure. Uh, there's not many accessible transportations, but we have identified some that we provide to our guests. And uh, we have also put on site some of the equipment, as you can see here, the, uh, the beach chair on the Galapagos Islands, for example. So what's key to our operation is always to have our equipment at the different operation sites. So we have the off-road wheelchairs in Peru, we have the off-road wheelchairs in Argentina, and with those we can assure um, uh, having like hands-on and fun experiences for our guests. 
Uh, here's just some uh, pictures where we show all the experiences we provide to our guests. We, they actually do rafting. Um, it's just like our, all our programs we offer, for example, at the Jungle Lodge are exactly the same as we offer to anyone else, but we adapt them. So we, we're maybe uh, going to a different river, which is not as, as, as difficult as the rivers, but depending on the abilities of each of our clients, so we personalize the, the tours. Um, yeah. Here is just the different tours we offer. We have a 12-day tour to Andes and Amazon, and an 11-day tour to Galapagos and Amazon, which are like our core uh, products at the company because we're based in Ecuador. Um, but we are also expanding, as I said, to the other countries like Peru. Uh, here, for example, uh, is, is our 11-day uh, Machu Picchu tour. We actually go to Machu Picchu, sorry, uh, and um, actually uh, people in wheelchairs are able to uh, go and enter the sites. Uh, and uh, well, here we need two helpers to be able to do that. Uh, well, here, this is only since 2017 that we have included Argentina. We've only done one tour, but it's been fantastic, and we expect uh, more tourists to, to go there. Uh, we're closely working with local tour operators to train them and uh, to have all our equipment there uh, to, to grow on, on this market, basically. Um, so what do we offer our clients? Um, so it's authentic, hands-on, fun, accessible, and safe experiences, just as we show here, for example, uh, there's uh, um, a client of ours in, 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 in the wheelchair, but he's actually able to participate in the activity and uh, ex have the full experience. Um, <clears throat> what are the next steps uh, we see for uh, South America for All? Um, it's, to, it's to grow our business. It's, it's to be able to offer the tours uh, to a wider range of, of, of uh, people in wheelchairs. Uh, we expect to design new accessible tours in South America um, and also to reach direct clients through fixed group dates. Um, one of the challenges is that the, the tours are quite expensive because at some places we need a lot of helpers. Uh, so if we have bigger groups, we will be able to, to cut the costs and be able to offer it to a better price to our, our clients. Um, another um, well, next step we're, we're looking at is to uh, contact a lot more travel agencies worldwide that offer accessible tours. It's grown very much over the past years and be able to reach their, their client base, basically. Um, what are the challenges? Bastien, um, Bastien you have... Yeah. You have no time. Oh, no time. Sorry. <laughs> but so, you can have ten uh, seconds. Ten okay. seconds. <laughs> Just quickly. Um, well, the thing is that we don't have um, an, a lot of financial re, uh, resources to adequately promote the tours and get the information out. So maybe we can further discuss the challenges in the in the round. Thank you very much. Thank you. Absolutely. So I think you've, you've uh, highlighted for us very strongly that interacting with many service providers is key to providing this accessibility in tourism. And you're mastering that very well in South America for all. Thank you very much. And so we are moving on. And uh, our next speaker is from Belgium. It is Wood uh, Lagering, who is product manager of accessibility and bicycle or cycling culture at uh, Visit Flanders, uh, the, the, which is the, the regional tourism authority of uh, Belgium in Flanders. <coughs> Uh, Ewood is an experienced product manager on accessible tourism and cycling culture in Flanders, which is very strong there, as you will know. He is proudly working on accessibility and cycling in Flanders for every visitor by giving advice and information to both the tourism industry and the tourists. And I can tell you Visit Flanders has a, a long and noble tradition of working on accessibility. Uh, I worked with them already 17 years ago on my first project in accessible tourism. So I'm very pleased to welcome another one of our ENAT members, Ewood, uh, to tell us about your work in Flanders. Thank you. 
Thank you, Ivor, for uh, introducing me so kindly. Um, I haven't been there for 17 years, but for 13 years already, so <laughs> quite a long time. Um, I would like to um, present to you our Bruges Accessible for Everyone project. Um, first thing to know is that it fits in our general goal of creating an accessible holiday destination um, for everyone in Flanders by 2020. Um, what do we mean by an all accessible holiday destination? Um, every shackle of the chain needs to fit. Um, you have to have all the information you need on places to visit, on accommodation, food and drinks, uh, public toilets, parking, rental of wheelchairs, all that stuff. Um, that's the only way to reach that goal if all these components um, are there. Um, if they're not, you can also just stick in your hotel room, but that's perhaps when you have other plans. Um, also fine by me. <laughs> uh, on the picture, by the way, you see um, Carmen. She's a colleague of ours and uh, she's blind. Um, and she's feeling a tactile model of the Bruges Belfry on the Grand Market Square in Bruges. Now, how do we collect that information? Um, we found that the keyword there was to cooperate. Cooperate with all kinds of services. Um, in this case, the Flemish Accessibility Agency called Inter. They always do the screenings for us, very detailed, uh, objective information. Um, of course, in this case, Visit Bruges, the city of Bruges, uh, were the main partner. Um, the Bruges Social, Social Services, um, the technical department of the city, very important, because if adaptations needs to be done on your route, they are the ones to do it. Um, and of course, people with disabilities um, to bring in their um, experience. What's important for us is that you start from an existing route, um, an existing strong touristic heritage route. Then we do a bottleneck walk with everyone who is involved. And after that, you check where you need to make um, changes to your route. Don't start from an, trying to create an accessible route. You always start from a strong route, which is touristically relevant. Um, of course, once you have collected all these pieces of information, you, you need to bring it to your visitor. Um, so we created uh, two things. I also brought some copies here, so come and see me afterwards if you would like to see them. Um, a map with a detailed route description on the back, uh, which, which clearly indicates where some points can be difficult, because it's not an ideal situation, um, and describes the route. And then a brochure with all the detailed information on accessibility, um, but of course also touristic information, because it, it, it is basically a tourist information brochure. Let's um, see more in detail. Um, this is an example of a page um, from the Historium. It's a um, kind of museum in the center of Bruges. Um, and we, we have the general information there and the accessibility information. We use icons so you can clearly see whether there are provisions for you as a person with a physical disability or people with learning, hearing, or visual impairments. And we also describe that in the text. Now we have a slightly different approach for the public toilets and for uh, restaurants and bars. Uh, you don't need all the text there, you just need basic information. Um, and it's um, clearly marked here with using the symbols, uh, the thumbs up, down, the colors, the pictures next to it, uh, and some basic information there. Uh, good to know is that we already selected those places that have a certain level of accessibility. Uh, we're not saying that everything is perfect. You can see that on, on the pages, so you can decide for yourself. Now, some important conclusions and uh, look in the, the future of the project. Um, Bruges is a medieval city. It's impossible to make a whole medieval city accessible. So focus on a well-defined area or on one strong or a couple of strong routes and develop them as a strong product. Um, including the different services, different people, makes them all ambassadors. And they're proud of what they've done to work with you there and they will continue to uh, spread the message, the word out there. Um, we also noticed that accessibility is now higher on the agenda of the city of Bruges, even beyond tourism. Since you include different persons, different uh, services from the city, they get to know accessibility as a subject. They were there with you on the route, you know, the project, so they 
continue to remember that for other uh, projects. Um, important also, Visit Bruges will do the next version, the next update of the brochure in their own look and feel, um, but with our support. They want this to be a product of the cities themselves and not of Visit Flanders. Um, and by now, other cities have done the same and will do this year, two more cities, um, two more art cities will do the same with our support uh, later this year too. Um, so this all helps by, or helps uh, get reaching our goal uh, by 2020 of creating this accessible holiday destination. I would like to end with a quote by uh, Geert de Molay. He's a wheelchair user who also helped us in the project. He said, the map and brochure help so much, the itinerary leads seamlessly to the highlights of the city. Descriptions are a must read and toilets and restaurants are described in a clear way with photographs. So when I visit Bruges now, I don't have to stay in the main shopping street anymore, as he used to do before. That's it for me. You can see Geert and his wife on the picture there in the market square in Bruges. Um, my contact details are there, so if you have any questions, please contact me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ewood. And this example is on page 53 in the, in the Zero Project catalog. Uh, I think also you've emphasized, uh, as Bastien did before, uh, that the, there's this very strong uh, need to cooperate. It's cooperation is the, the first and the last uh, word in all of this. But also you pointed out very clearly, you're talking about European cities, which are by, by nature historical cities, difficult to deal with sometimes because they have many limitations, and so we have to have good information, well-qualified information uh, about the accessibility and develop, uh, for those of you who are maybe just starting on this pathway, the, the idea of accessible routes or accessible itineraries is one way to, to break the, uh, the problems, to, to find out how to do this, how to cooperate, and how to actually make the, the cities more accessible. So again, a very good practice example. And now we go further afield. Uh, we have Neha Arora, uh, Planet Abled from India. And Neha is the, the founder of Planet Abled, an organization which provides accessible and inclusive travel solutions for people with disabilities. Uh, she says she has a, a totally unused degree up her sleeve from the university, uh, but she's been working with companies uh, including HCL, Nokia, and Adobe uh, before she decided to go for this uh, idea of making the planet better abled. So with Planet Abled, uh, she's working now on the, the subject of accessibility in tourism. Uh, both her parents had disabilities, and those personal challenging experiences faced in traveling has uh, shown her the huge gap in society. And that's why she's set off in this direction. Uh, I'd also mention she's a graduate of NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center MMI program, and is a recipient of India Inclusion Summit Fellowship for her work at Planet Abled. And in a personal capacity, she conducts workshops in corporates and various forums uh, for an amalgamation of people with disabilities in mainstream and, and uh, via travel and recreation. So uh, we hand over to Neha uh, to tell us about a buddy program for travelers with and without disabilities. It's on page 74 of the Zero Project catalog. Thank you. Neha. Thanks, Ivo, for such a wonderful introduction. Yeah, hi. Uh, so coming to the accessible tourism space, uh, like uh, planet through Planetable, we are just trying to make the planet accessible for everyone to travel one trip at a time. Uh, so why we are talking about accessible travel here? So when we talk of uh, most of the people without disabilities, they have never ever interacted with a person with disabilities. They have their own ha apprehensions and hesitations, like what would happen if I say something wrong. And uh, people with disabilities, when they think of traveling, there are a lot of questions that come to their mind about the accessibility of the place, the societal stigmas, the communication barriers, and the biggest, the fear of the unknown. What if they visit a new destination uh, for traveling? What would be there for them to welcome? This I pay 
faced personally because you know everywhere we were going we had to figure out the local logistic while reaching there so the surprises are not always pleasant for that matter so and most of the time people with disabilities always remain in their own similar disability groups like not uh, communicating more with people with other disabilities and when it comes to india like people from other countries don't even consider india as a destination because yeah, so we are a developing country, and in terms of accessibility, we are still uh, we still have a long way to go. So, coming to the market potential of accessible tourism, I'll just uh, mention some of the numbers. Though uh, my friends here are already aware about that, uh, over 600 to 900 million people—that's like nearly 10 percent of the world population—needs barrier-free tourism. Uh, this is the source is ENAT only, and with the aging population, by 2030, nearly 16% of the world population would be over the age of 60, and that they would require barrier-free travel. And when it comes to India, India is seventh in terms of the highest the, the contribution of travel and tourism to its GDP. Last year, it was 9.7, 9 9.6% 9 uh, that con to the contribution of GDP nearly 200 billion US dollars of business. So coming to the innovation in accessible travel, so we, what we have tried to do is, because I ha have parents who have different disabilities, I could not choose one disability to focus on accessible travel. So it was like m implementing universal design concepts, mixing people of various disabilities together with people without disabilities, and then traveling together. So like in on our group tours, you would have a blind person traveling with a deaf person, with a person on wheelchair, with a person with Down syndrome, and people without disabilities acting as travel buddies to the people with disabilities. So that's where uh, one of the best practices comes in. And these people are not volunteers. They are also the paying travelers. So everyone pays for their travel. Everyone travels together as co-travelers does not matter that they have any disability or not. That's the whole idea of uh, the travel buddy concept. Then we have a gift to a program in which people who cannot afford, because uh, through the travel buddy program, everyone pays for their own travel with dignity and respect. If they cannot afford, there is a gift to a program who can afford. The person can be with or without disability, and they pay for any other person's travel. So when it comes to India, accessible tourism is still not, uh, like we are just scratching the surface of it. So we consult the travel fraternity in India, whether they have their properties or the travel companies who want to get into travel for people with disabilities and consult them how to implement barrier-free tourism in their mainstream. So that's like what Daniela also mentioned in the morning, mainstreaming travel for all, like inclusive tourism where a traveler, whether or not they have a disability, should not make a difference. Coming to the barrier-free journey, like we want to bring a paradigm shift in the way people with disabilities travel by converting them into avid travelers and creating an ecosystem for inclusive travel alongside. So people can travel solo, go on romantic getaways, travel with their family, or join the group tours for that matter. And could, like, it could be anyone. They could go for a local tour or they go for holidays. It could, be from, it could vary from few hours to like a holiday spanning 20 days, as long as that. So, and the, based on the themes of heritage, adventure, wellness, spirituality, you just take the pick. Like, yeah, so I'll just uh, move ahead because my time is running out. So we did the first ever rafting tour also for people with disabilities in India, and now we are getting up for the skiing trip first time in India for people with disabilities. So the target audience is pretty much everyone, people of any disability for that matter, and people without disabilities who are looking for a unique travel experience. The revenue sources are our holidays and city tours, corporate excursions, workshops, local get-togethers, consulting services, and the travel buddy services. Because if it's not a group tour and someone wants to travel solo, a paid travel buddy service is also available. The social impact created in less than two, uh, two years of our uh, existence, over 350 unique travel experiences. The Travel Buddies experiences, which created ripples no one could have expected. People without disabilities who, went, who traveled with us realized 
that the people, that their core travelers with disabilities are just people like them, and there is no difference for that matter. They went back to their communities and became accessibility and inclusion ambassadors in their own network making their offices accessible, started uh, making, uh, like hiring people with disabilities, and uh, becoming friends with all of them. So that was one unique thing that we did not uh, anticipate, but did happen. Then the hospitality ecosystem in India changed completely because people realized the market potential barrier-free tourism have in India. So like many big travel companies have now replicated our model. So travel is cool, and so is like disability now. That's what we uh, try to focus on. What planetable travelers say, some really love the idea of inclusive travel, like mixing all of them together, traveling as one karma, karma like ad adventure holidays being uh, independently enjoyed by a person with disability. That's what his uh, idea of travel was, like who recently got uh, acquired the disability, and he could do rafting and ziplining on his own. He was like on a high for that matter. So like uh, the last one says about a couple, blind couple who traveled with us and said that uh, it could not happen, have happened because we created bespoke experiences for them as per their active senses and the disability so that they are better able to enjoy the experience and the culture and the destination where they're going to. These are a few of the pictures of our travels, uh, like group of friends, travel buddies, a travel buddy explaining a map. Uh, there is a group on the raft, which is a mixture of people with various disability, and yeah, a person uh, on a wheelchair at the edge of the cliff. So uh, the, uh, the, there's a picture of a girl who is deaf and mute and has got cerebral pal palsy, and she's drumming in that picture. So imagine the kind of enjoyment that you get when you get into that kind of a travel. So some of the success stories, the uh, journey started with a six-hour tour and ended OK, thank you so much. <laughs> And uh, now we span across 20 days and operate in over 30 plus destinations across India. Inclusive trips uh, broke all the apprehensions and communication barriers that existed. We started an access to travel conference last year to create the whole ecosystem around barrier-free tourism in India so that the whole community and industry comes together to promote barrier-free tourism. The road ahead is we are uh, doing the first ever skiing trip in India and mainstreaming accessible travel in alignment with the SDG 2030 and increase the scope and impact of gifted to a trap program. And of course, when it talks of uh, travel buddy program, everyone travels together. That's the whole idea. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very much, Neha, and uh, pressing you at the end there for the button. But um, I think what comes across very strongly here is that, uh, as, as much as any other person in the panel, but you've expressed very well how everybody who is engaged in tourism can become a change maker, as we heard this morning. It's about being change makers, and this requires some initiatives from the businesses and from the disability organizations themselves, but by joining together, having mainstreaming the accessibility in tourism, everybody who participates in tourism can have impact, they can help to innovate, and they can realize the inclusion that we're, we're so eager to, to promote. Thank you. So that's on page 74 in the directory. Uh, now we go to our next speaker, uh, and this is Jose Luis uh, Borao, and he is head of built environment accessibility department at the ONCE Foundation in Spain. Uh, he gained his degree in architecture from the Polytechnic University of Madrid, and he has something like 20 years experience working in different accessibility fields with the ONCE Foundation and its corporate group. So he's been a consultant for different public and private entities in the implementations of actions in the urban, architectural, and national areas. Uh, he's also a coordinator of several projects and worked on conferences and seminars on accessibility in Spain and Spanish-speaking countries. And uh, one of the, the key features has been on smart and human city projects in Colombia, Ecuador, Qatar, and so on. So he's here today. Uh, it's, this is one of the, 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 uh, the strategies, the policies that has been recognized by Zero Project. He's here today to talk about 
an international accessible tourism standard, which is ongoing, being uh, developed uh, through the ISO, through International Standards Organization, um, through the initiative of Onthe Foundation and one of the uh, partners of the UN, the U United Nations World Tourism Organization. Uh, this is on page 142 in the catalogue, and Jose Luis, please take it away. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ivor, for the presentation. First of, all, first of all, I'd like to, yes, in order to manage the, the stress caused with, with, the, with the traffic light, <laughs> when, the, when the, orange, the orange light goes, goes on, how many minutes left? <laughs> Just two minutes, three minutes. A lady with the with the traffic light. Sorry. Didn't get me. Uh, I, I um, how many that. minutes when the when the when the traffic light is, is on, on nine orange. minutes. Nine minutes, okay. Well. Okay, thank you. Well I lost twenty seconds anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, first of all first first of all I'd like to to thank the Zero Project uh, to, to invite invite again to the to the to the Onfe Foundation, the Fundación Onfe in Spain. Uh, it's, we are really proud to be here again. We, are, we have been here for, from the beginning of the Zero Project uh, conferences, and we are so proud to be here. And today to speak about uh, an issue that we are working, as, as I was said in my presentation, with the, with the, best, um, with the best partner we can, we can find in, in, the, in the world level for uh, uh, talking about uh, tourism issues. So it was, as he said, the World Tourism Organization. And we're working on, the, on a, an, an accessible tourism for all standard. I have listened before that when we talk about accessibility, we don't talk only for people uh, who uses um, a wheelchair to move. But when we talk about uh, tourism, uh, we can we always say, is, I have another another argument. Okay, every 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 everybody we go on on, on we we, call, we 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 make a, a tourist. Everybody use a wheel anyway, the, the wheelchair users, but all the all the people using a, a baggage with 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 a trolley baggage with 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 wheels. We push a, a baby trolley. We use many people uses bikes, rides, rides a bicycle or something. So everybody uses um, uh, wheels anyway. But many people don't know the the, 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 the language where, 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 when, where, where goes, when when they go to to any to any uh, to, and to any other country that they don't know the, the language. So they have. A cognitive uh, disability when they are visiting there and they are looking for some some place for for dinner. So when we are talking again with uh, uh, tourism for all, is 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 it's true. We are drafting a, um, a standard that key, that that takes into account all the all the needs of people, all the all the needs of of, of users of the tourist touristic destinations. So and tourist or sorry, or tourism uh, takes into account any anything. We were talking before of the conference with Ivor. Uh, tourism is everything. Tourism is built environment. Tourism is urban environment. Tourism is services. Tourism is is quality. It's quality at the end is quality. So when we are talking on accessibility in tourism, we always have in, uh, must have on the on our head the word quality. Uh, an accessible destination will be a quality destination anyway, any anyway. It can be an, if, of another of another way. Well, uh, as I was, I, as I said in the in the beginning, uh, we are leading this 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 project, uh, defining this standard of accessibility of accessible accessible tourism for all uh, within the the World Tourism Organization. And we are working together uh, from the year 1916. Well, we were working before, but we are working for, 19, for 2016 uh, in the creation of this global standard on tourism. We are working with all the national, with the national uh, standardization uh, boards of of, every, of many countries in the world, many of uh, of of Europe. We are we are working with. 
uh, boards of Canada, US, Argentina, Nigeria, of many worlds, of many, of many, of many countries of the world, and we are, we are drafting this, this standard. Okay, we see this standard. Uh, why this standard? Because we, we, we made uh, a state of the art, and we saw that uh, we need to, 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 to give response to human diversity and people's different needs when, we, when they, 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 they go to a, to a destination. There is a great lack of information on specific standards on accessibility. There is a different uh, points of view on different countries. Uh, but when, when uh, a, a, wheel, a wheelchair users demands the same space to, 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 to walk in, in India that, that in Spain. So it's, 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 not, it's not quite logic that uh, there's not the, the, the same standard in different countries. And so we, uh, despite the, the existence of some accessible tourism standards, there remain large gaps from country to country, lack of knowledge, uh, the existing tools and solution is further complicated by contradictory information on different standards be between countries and regions. And what, we, and what is expected for, with the standard, the standard will, pro will provide clear guidelines for tourism planning and destination management with specific recommendations and requirements for accessible, for accessible tourism. Uh, we are developing this standard from the Technical Committee 228 is uh, a body tasked with tourism and related services uh, into the International Standards Authority, this is uh, ISO, okay? And it will help countries to better understand the needs of users for, and provide a blueprint to best address them, whether by public authorities or the private, private sector. And um, what is the scope? The scope was so is is, is going to be uh, all, all the all the all the accessibility all the accessibility tourism chain. We all the actors that that take part on the on the accessibility design in a destination. The public administration, of course, uh, at local, regional, national, international level, uh, travel and tourism tourism stakeholders like travel agencies, restaurants, hotels, etc., transport developers and designers of tourism products and services, and of course, end users, all the tourists and the local, it's important that the local, the local po population. Uh, the impact, of course, it would be, we're talking with all the users, people with, 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 with disabilities, but, uh, but at the end is all the people are, 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 the, are the beneficiaries of this of this, of this standard. You see, blind people will be able, will be able to find information in internet for, for the trips, before the trips, but when we get to a, an accessible destination, uh, they will be able to, to get information from the, from the museums, from the, from, the, from the localizations, directors of the street, uh, from the contents of the, of the, of the museum, etc. So uh, everybody will will get um, will get ben uh, will be benef beneficiary of this of the standard. Of course, this standard is not uh, is not mandatory; it's voluntary. So, if any destination can wants to comply with this, will be really in a, in a voluntary way. But will I'm absolutely all, all, all we are all who are working on this standard are absolutely uh, convinced that will be um, a destination that will be uh, with high levels of quality. In the future, this, this, this standard will be published on, nine, on 2019 and will be available not only for ISO uh, members but also for all, the, for all the community. Thank you very much. I try to, 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 to manage the, the stress of the, of, the, of the traffic light, and thank you so much. Thank you, Jose Luis. I think it's a very important um, message from, from this selection of a, a, a very good strategy that uh, accessibility is something that concerns all the tourism industry and that it's something that it is so important that United Nations World Tourism Organization and ISO 
has taken this up uh, to develop uh, a voluntary standard because the, the basic question that so many businesses have in the back of their minds is, well, what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to make our services accessible, our buildings accessible? And for the first time when we reach 2019, we'll be able to point to one document for the whole world which gives guidance and support for those who want to make their business more accessible. So I think it's a very important um, strategy that's uh, been recognized here. So two more speakers to go. And uh, the next one is also a good friend, Silvana Lakis from uh, Lebanon. Uh, she's the president of the Lebanese Physical Handicap Union. And she's been active with this organization since 1986, unbelievable. <laughs> but she currently, She's the acting president of LPHU and the chairperson of the Regional Arab Bureau of Disabled Peoples International. And she's used her expertise to, to further implement campaigns and projects dealing with inclusive policies. Awareness raising is probably the, uh, she is perhaps the, the queen of awareness raising on accessibility in <laughs> Lebanon, if I can call you that. She's provided consultations and advice to ministries of education, information, labor, social affairs, public works, and transportation, and finance, and is now uh, recently appointed as a consultant for the Ministry of Social Affairs. And I'm also pleased to say she's managing a Europe Aid funded project in partnership with ENAT, our organization, which is raising the awareness of the public sector, private tourism businesses, and introducing, actually, accessible tourism as a concept uh, and accessible travel in Lebanon. The, uh, the project is described on page 96 of the catalogue, and she's going to talk about inclusive tourism project for tourist sites in Lebanon. Thank you, Silvana. Thank you, Ivor, and thank you, Zero Project, for uh, inviting uh, us today and... Uh, for having this wonderful platform, which I'm sure is going to support all of us to do better our job. I'm going to try to, to stick to the time. Uh, first of all, LPHU, the organization that I'm representing today, is a grassroots organization uh, from and for people with motor disability. Uh, we work to, to change the situation in a country that has, at official level, uh, exercised mainly the old way of dealing with disability and with diversity, which is the exclusion. So what we usually do, we try to develop a model and when we say a model, it means we're trying to prepare the infrastructure and the uh, human resource, the knowledge for sustainability to, to move from micro to macro level. Lebanon is a very small country, and uh, we are about 5 million uh, habitants. Uh, and uh, currently, we have this project, uh, the uh, Tourism for All. How do I use this? OK. Yes. Uh, Tourism for All is a project, as uh, our friend Ivor was saying, funded by the European Union uh, uh, our with our partners, ENAT. And at local level, we have the project is wor working in four areas of Lebanon, four touristic areas. Uh, and in each area, we have a partnership with the local community, with the municipality, so with the uh, local uh, civil society, and with private sector, of course. And these areas are Baalbek, Balbek is a very uh, ancient and uh, touristic city. Uh, cedar, uh, Shuf Cedar is a biosphere uh, reserved area. And uh, Biblos, it's uh, an ancient small city at the seaside. And Sur, Tyr. 
in, in each of these four uh, areas, we wanted to do a, uh, a pilot. We are doing a pilot, uh, which means it should include a package of all the services that might be uh, 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 needed in tourism. So uh, we're talking about uh, a place to visit, uh, accommodation, transportation, information, and of course, employment, inclusive employment and uh, 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 activity. Uh, as I uh, said, the objective of this project is to, first of all, uh, present a model, uh, prove how it can be done, then mobilize the uh, key stakeholders from the private sector, from the public sector, from civil society, and from disability movement to all together work to uh, provide, first of all, the establishment or the implementation of this model and then to carry on towards policy. So the project was designed in a way that provides technical support and uh, um, uh, awareness raising and uh, uh, also plan for the model. But the implementation of the model was not included uh, uh, budget-wise in the design. What was included is we wanted to make sure that throughout this project to mobilize the interest and the will of all stakeholders to go into implementation. How we did this? We did this by creating a, a kind of platform from private sector. So for example, we have the Chamber of Commerce, the Union of the syndic, uh, syndic, uh, Touristic Syndicate, uh, and others, all relevant uh, business community, uh, public sector, uh, such as the Ministry of Tourism, for example, Ministry of Social Affairs, Ministry of Public Work, and others. These people have joined the project and do sit in a, in a board where they follow, they support, they give advice, and they think together how to go further based on this implementation. So um, what it changed? I'm, I'm not going to be able to talk about the whole project today. I, I have chosen part of the four uh, areas to talk about, which is Tyr, south of Lebanon, a small ancient city. Uh, there, the project managed to uh, uh, develop uh, a strategy for making uh, going to the beach uh, uh, an accessible uh, uh, a choice. So, um, a restaurant, a hotel, uh, going from the parking till the sea uh, um, uh, to, uh, to swim now uh, is available for people with all type of disability or type of needs, diversity needs. And talking about such a model in Lebanon, uh, it has never happened before. So, uh, and to make sustainability, uh, the yellow is lightning. To make sustainability, uh, we need to make sure that the way we think, the culture, the way we act, the performance, and the plan of action is inclusive. So based on this uh, model, so here, uh, what I'm, sorry, I'm not used to this technology. Uh, here, for example, I'm showing the menu that was uh, printed in Braille and in a friendly reading way. For people with disability, when they go to the restaurant, they can uh, choose whatever way they would like. Here, the other picture is about taxi. This is Allo Taxi. 
Uh, uh, also, we, we, we mobilized this company. Now this company has accessible uh, taxis and uh, uh, also uh, are part of the project. Well, uh, also I mentioned that there are also, oh, right. Uh, but I'm the last, can I take two minutes? Ah, okay. Uh, anyway. This project also includes employment, as I said. So part of the project was also providing jobs for people with disability within the touristic sector. We consider ourselves still in the beginning of the way, but this project has proved success for all. Uh, and uh, I would like to say, for example, the chair of the Union for S Touristic Syndicates uh, touristic uh, uh, syndicates, yes. He used to tell me that uh, uh, he had a daughter with disability and, and when, uh, I'm not going to, to end the story. Those who want to hear it can ask me. Yes, later. please, yes, please. <laughs> Sorry? Okay, thank you. And this guy used to put his daughter away, he's the owner of a hotel, because the customers were annoyed by seeing an a person with intellectual disability uh, uh, among others. So this, the same person now, is one of the activist people inside this process and is a decision maker in the tourism uh, field. So for us, this is the sustainability, to make people believe in what they are doing and to move based on human rights-based uh, approach. Thank you again. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Very nice. How was it? No, thank you very much, Silvana. And a uh, very important project uh, to us as well in, in INAT, but I think a very good example that's been chosen to highlight just how, how far you, and how you can go forward in countries where accessibility in tourism is by no means taken for granted. Uh, it's something that we need to work on also around the world in all countries, uh, the more developed and the, the least developed. Now, we're almost finished. We have uh, one more uh, speaker. It's Alessandro Dalla Pieta, who's going to uh, show us uh, a couple of videos about gondolas for all. Alessandro, ciao. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> yes, we haven't met before. So, uh, you take this seat, and I will move I to the side. This side anyway. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Please. Good morning, everybody. So, good morning, everybody, and I'm very nice to meet you. I'm here to explain in a little project that came from Venice. So. Five years ago, me and my colleague Enrico that is here, we have an idea because we have a job, we are a gondolier and we do for many times the same things. So what? We must say no at the people of the wheelchairs that ask if they can take a gondola ride with us. And when they, we say no more, no more. And we start in a very long and hard work to permit that people, wheelchair users, come inside into the gondola in very safe and independent uh, situation because you, they don't need nobody that carry on with, you know. So the project have a I'm sorry, my English is not very good, so I, I write something maybe to read that can everybody, everybody can understand. So, accessing facility means living life to the full, sharing spaces and the opportunity for meeting other people. This is environment right and shiraman in UN convention and the right of person with disability, which rules that states parties should take appropriate measure to ensure that persons with disability have access to the physical environment and transportation, 
among the things. Visiting an unique special city like Venice on board a gondola on one of the symbols of Venice is not possible for the wheelchair user. So that's until two years ago was not possible. Okay. Gondolas for All Onlus aims to solve this problem. In which way? Wheelchair user must be able to get into the gondola safely and independently. And Venice must become an even more accessibility city. Our solution will be was easy and safe. Gondolas for All has designed a complete new solution. Never previously implement the construction of a special jetty combined with an automatic wheelchair lift able to transfer wheelchair users onto the gondola in a safe, controlled way. How it works? Special jetty is in a floating jetty made entirely of recycled plastic obtained from tetrapack processing and produced by the company Rain. Access to the jetty is provided by an no sleeping ramp. The automatic wheelchair lift is provided with a special lift that the wheelchair is fixed to the lift, which, by means of the two motors, move it and position it directly into the gondola. A simple, safe operation. The automatic wheelchair lift will be produced by Fadiel and Ending Como company in Europe specializing in equipment for disability. So maybe you see the picture that can explain what we do, but uh, we have also a video that we can introduce the project. Um, La libertà è quando sei libero di poter andare dove si vuole. Ho visto troppe volte quell'espressione delusa sulla faccia. Fino ad oggi non era possibile portare delle persone in carrozzina in gondola. Qualche volta ne abbiamo imbarcate qualcuna a braccia. Ma non si può più andare avanti così. La Onlus Gondolas for All nasce per rendere accessibile la gondola anche alle persone che usano la carrozzina. Non è mai stato realizzato un progetto così. È una vera innovazione per Venezia. L'accessibilità è un valore di civiltà e viaggiare e vivere, viaggiare e fare esperienza è indispensabile. Noi a Village for All abbiamo deciso di sostenere il progetto Gondolas for All perché consente di realizzare tutto questo in una città magica come Venezia e rendere magico per tutti la possibilità di fare un giro in gondola. Sostenete Gondolas for All. More or less, this is our project. So we have the last message of this project is that if the gondola is possible, 
now everything is possible. So everybody can do something, you know, to change a piece of this world. So thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much indeed, Alessandro. Great to meet you at last. And uh, I think all of us, we want to take a ride on the gondola now. Yes, here we are. <laughs> so we meet you in the stripy shirt and the, the boater. Exactly, of course. and under the sun. And under the sun. <laughs> thank you very much. OK, so we have a little time left uh, for some questions from the audience and uh, to pick up on any points that you've heard here, if you want further elaboration. Um, and we will also be referring to a little piece of work uh, by our colleague Petra, who has been taking notes uh, in an illustrative sort of way uh, to show us what the speakers have been talking about and how she has captured accessibility in tourism through the speeches that have just been presented. Uh, so that's also uh, a very good graphic that I hope that we can use to promote accessible tourism from the Zero Project conference. But uh, I'm standing here with a bright light in my, in my eyes, but I will try to take some uh, questions now. And you will use the microphone in front of you, of course. Uh, please introduce yourself when you uh, make a, a question. And please keep it short, not a speech, but a, a question. And tell, tell us who you would like to, uh, your question to be directed to as well. Thank you. So who's first? Do we have anyone to take the lead? I can't see for this poster here now. Someone wants more info? Very satisfied customers here, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> I'll take my notes, because I have a few questions of my own. <clears throat> so maybe I can just reinforce a couple of the points and come back to uh, some of the main themes that all the speakers have been addressing here. Uh, as I said before, um, uh, as many speakers have, have repeated this, it's about cooperation. Tourism as a, as a business is about cooperation and involvement of many different players and actors uh, to put together good experiences for all customers. And, and I think we've, we've heard it from South America. We've heard it especially also uh, in the case of uh, Marco Pizzio's organization, reaching out to other organizations that we maybe haven't worked with before and um, actually developing accessibility as a process as we go along. And I think it's also very important uh, that we, we pick up on that from, from what uh, Silvana was talking about. Uh, having worked in many different uh, ministries or worked with ministries and worked with the, the, uh, the people in Lebanon, that this is a project, accessibility, if you see it through the eyes of tourism, this is a project that draws in so many different areas. You could call it, in fact, like all the members of an orchestra coming together, bringing together people who can play an instrument, uh, but they haven't played together before, and they didn't know the music before it was put in front of them. So you have to set up a whole symphony to get people to work together. And uh, what is music after all? It's vibrations. It's vibrations. And it, you're setting up a vibration, not only among the people who are working in the project, but in society as a whole, to create waves across society through the actions of developing an accessible tourism project or program or itinerary, we're enabling change through the agency of tourism. So we've seen it from all these speakers that they've all developed a product which is accessible, but they've always worked together with others to develop that project, project, project and product. I'd like to... Uh, Pinpoint Magnus again from uh, Scandic. Would you like to come back on this, Magnus? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I think I think one of the big problems is really that it's people speaking about disability is we speak about project, 
we don't speak about including it. Because if you look at the environment, environment was a problem 30 years ago, now it's included in all the companies. And I think that's really the big thing. It's still a project, but we still we need to start including it in, in everything we're doing. And I get in, many times I get into questions, what is the other companies doing in airport, uh, airlines, things like that, and what is the big difference? And I, I think the big difference between us and many other companies I believe is that if I ask them, how do you work with these questions, they're going to answer, we follow the law. And we do it to get more guests. And that's really two big different ways to thinking and working with it. So I'm thinking we, start, we need to start seeing all disabled people as a guest. And that, then it's, that, that's really the, the, the big thing, to include it and not see that project in 10 years. That, that's what I'm really hoping. <laughs> Thanks, Magnus. Yes. Uh, also, from uh, Jose, uh, Jose Luis, you were talking about standards, and I think standards are, are very important as a, as a direction uh, to follow. Um, would you like to tell us a, a little bit more about why the, uh, or how the standard you would expect the standard would be, would then be promoted and implemented? Because that's the key thing, isn't it? Once we've got this standard, to try and implement that. Yeah, of course. Uh, one of the things I didn't I didn't say in my in my presentation is that uh, uh, all the all all the all the companies will make will make uh, their their services their infrastructures accessible uh, when they say, when they when they when they perceive that the that the competence have done that, and when they when 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 they. Um, can prove that is benef uh, benef beneficiary for them. I can. I just want to add uh, a sentence that that Jesus, my boss in Fundacion, in the Foundation, he always says: If you don't do, if you don't make accessible your 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 your, your company, your business, uh, f because of my of my my rights, do it for for my for my euros. No, it's, 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 it's absolutely um, it's, 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 it's the argument for, for, for the companies, for the, sec for the private sector, to, to see their disability for, uh, as, a, as a great opportunity for, 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 the, for the business to grow. So the, the, the standards will help, will help with this, um, these companies to, 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 to earn money. So it's obvious. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'd like to take this up to the policy level even, even further. Uh, if, I, if I can ask uh, in English and we can translate to Polish, please. I have a question uh, uh, for uh, Marek about what you've heard today. Uh, what you have heard from the speakers, how does this uh, hopefully inspire you uh, to convince fellow members of the European Parliament to vote for a strong accessibility act in Europe? Bardzo się cieszę z tej wypowiedzi, które słyszałem, bo one świadczą o tym zdecydowanie, że turystyka może być dostępna, a co jeszcze ważniejsze, że powinna być dostępna dla każdego. Uh, I'm very glad that I heard what, what I heard today and uh, all the speeches uh, were very convincing and convinced me that uh, tourism uh, should be accessible and really has to be accessible for all. Dostępność w turystyce e, rodzi się z różnych powodów. Czasem dlatego, że to jest naprawdę dobry biznes i każdy klient w tym biznesie jest ważny, a czasem dlatego, że dostępna turystyka jest wspaniałą wizytówką dla Miasta, regionu czy kraju. Trudno o lepszą promocję. Um, that might, might be several reasons, various reasons uh, for uh, making your tourism business uh, accessible. Sometimes it is just because it is good business and because every client counts. Uh, but sometimes it is also the great promotion for, uh, for the city. Uh, for the country or for the hotel chain. Powody są różne, ale ważne, że są ludzie, którzy 
chcą podejmować te działania. Często jednak brakuje impulsu kogoś, kto powie, musimy zrobić to teraz. I myślę, jestem przekonany, że to jest również rola Unii Europejskiej, żeby powiedzieć sobie wszystkim krajom członkowskim, że ten czas już nadszedł, że chcemy w pełni dostępnej turystyki. So, uh, the reasons are different, but uh, the most important issue is uh, that it must be somebody or must be the group of people who will get the motivation to make a change. And sometimes uh, what is needed is a trigger. This, uh, it is the starting point, the starting ball, the trigger. And I believe now that uh, one of the re role of the European Union and also the European Parliament and Council is to, uh, to decide that we have to make our environment, our society uh, accessible and we have to do it now. Żeby ten efekt był możliwy, potrzebujemy y, wspólnych standardów. Dlatego bardzo ważne były tutaj te przykłady, które mówiły o standaryzacji. Ja też często w mojej pracy, czy wtedy, kiedy chcę dobrze spędzić wakacje z rodziną, szukam dobrych rozwiązań i szukam standardu, który y, jest jednakowy. Okay, so um, um, I'm, I'm convinced that we need common standards. That's why I find this uh, this information about the standards, this uh, this uh, common st European standard, as as important. Uh, me personally, when I'm looking for the holiday with family, I'm also looking for the common standard uh, to be sure that that uh, my holiday will be, you know, the dream one, not the catastrophic one. Thank you. Yeah. Fine. Fine, thank you very much for those words, very important to us. And now Petra, please, tell us what you've been doing. Can you? Yes, you can hear me. What I've been doing was um, listening, because uh, one of the parts of accessible tourism is also participating in big conferences. Um, unfortunately, the chair cannot see right now the pictures. We'll turn it around later on. And this is supportive communication, of course, in visual pictures. So for people with um, visual impairments, I'm sorry, but I will try to explain quickly what I heard. Um, we heard that tourism is part of our lives. A conference like this is part of tourism. So we are all part of tourism. And tourism um, evolves along the tourism value chain. It includes travelers, and we need to address travelers with and without disabilities. So we need accessibility for everyone, and it must be mainstreamed. Transportation, um, accommodation, food and beverage, attractions, supportive services along the value chain need to be accessible for everyone. Things are done on a continent level, like in Europe, or on national levels with inclusive politics or policies. But it is also a private business uh, deal, so it's important to cooperate between public and private, because tourism is a large sector. It's a large economic sector. It provides, for instance, uh, jobs to a large amount of people. So creating value means adding to the quality of life of people who travel and people who live somewhere. So we heard very, very interesting uh, examples. The last one, um, the gondola for everyone, accessible gondolas, just to mention one example right here. But also um, tourism as part of our human right. We have a right to participate. So from all the examples we heard, we also heard about um, the ambassador Dixie, who is uh, going through hotels and checking them for accessibility. Um, and also that cities, ancient cities, need to provide information on their accessibility, just to mention another example. Quality standards on a global level, 
like from the ISO, but also standards within corporations and organizations to make sure accessibility is provided for everyone. There could be a lot more. This service is one of the zero project services to make things maybe again once more understandable. So if any one of you wants to look at this and get some description, please come and see me. I'll be right there. Other than that, I'm done. Okay, I think that's fantastic and a very in inspiring illustration of everything that has gone before us in the, the last uh, almost two hours. Thank you very much for your participation and thank you to every one of the speakers. Uh, I won't name you all individually again, but thank you so much for sharing your good practices with us. And I'd just like to say one last thing, uh, which was referred to just a moment ago, that we need, to, we need to really promote. We need to be champions of accessible tourism, each and every one of us, uh, because the world doesn't have enough champions of accessible tourism yet. Uh, and I think every tourist needs to be a champion of accessible tourism. Thank you very much. <laughs>